foodstores.com, the, the owner. He's got 31,000 followers on TikTok. Thanks to me. He's got Twitter, I don't even think he knows that. He's got the Alabama Roll Tide hat on tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, my father, Paul Coot Williams. This should be interesting. <laughs> First, I'd have to say, Jordan, what did we say? Okay. It's always time. Well, we say roll tide. Say, come on. Say roll tide! Roll tide! And she's trying to say roll tide to these people, but no one <laughs> would say roll tide back. Roll tide! Roll, roll tide! tide. Roll tide. All right, we're gonna do a cheer. I love doing this cheer when the arrow is at Lourdes High School. So just follow my lead and you should get it. All right, here we go. Give me a B! B! Give me another B! B! Give me another B! B! What's it spell? <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Now I have to pull out my papers. <coughs> How many pages did you write for me? Four. Four. Mm. Kathy and I typed that song. It took us like three days. <laughs> Bear with me here, please. Prepare. You just took a selfie. <laughs> Thanks to Ken Grill and Nate Grill from HP Enterprises, they have an awesome headlight here. So I can read. I got the wrong glasses here, so hang on. Okay, who would know four years ago 
a trip to the hospital with Aaron's grandpa Williams for a treatment for chemo, and a lab raised business card would lead to Aaron's meeting a girl of his dreams. This relationship, in the meantime, Kathy and I decided to um, <clears throat> find out more about Jordan. So, Kathy's very good at stalking. <laughs> So we ended up on a stalking date. Yeah. We, we went over to Schwartz's to check out Jordan. <laughs> sure. Yeah, okay. So we had to find out why Erin was so head over heels to this woman. So <clears throat> she was bartending that night, and after seeing her and talking to her, we knew that Erin had fallen the love of his life. It didn't take more than a second and a smile to realize he was in love. Jordan is a kind, thoughtful, and caring, beautiful young woman inside and out. We took pictures of her. <laughs> As some stalkers do. <laughs> so, we send this picture to Aaron, and he says, okay, guess where we are? And he was kind of taken back for a moment, like, okay, we're checking out Jordan. He didn't even know what he's down in Alabama. Oh, no, he's working for the Braves. He was in Florida at uh, spring camp. So a few months later, Aaron asked Jordan to be his girlfriend. On October 12, 2019, he proposed to her in Fond du Lac at Lakeside Park on the bridge over the water. Both families were there because Aaron felt the symbolic of the bridging of the two families as one. We are immensely proud to welcome Jordan into our family and very thankful to Dan and Tammy for a loving, caring <clears throat> woman, our daughter, that they raised for our son, Aaron. Aaron, the first role you had in this world was being our baby boy. Since then, you have been lightening up our world. You have become a consistently great son and a brother, always putting family first. You have become the man with many talents accomplishments. Today we have chosen Jordan as you as a bride and we could not be any happier. We thank God that he brought Jordan into your life. Jordan, you are the strong, loving, and courageous woman. Together, <clears throat> you and Aaron are best friends and will walk in the journey for the perfect match. We see that Aaron always looks at you and we know he loves you unconditionally that you love for him also. All right, so they're seeing uh, on the paper here. Okay, now the speech will <laughs> put a few embarrassing moments. So, uh, did you get the email I sent you? I promoted you now. She, she's our pro staff of Coots Lures. So, she's going to be in charge of merchandise. So, we have Caesars and jerseys, which will be sold in the back room there for you. Aaron, what are you laughing at? I just made you production manager. <laughs> the chainsaw a little later. <laughs> All right, Aaron at times could be challenging young boy and like his brother always like teasing his big sister. Jessica loved to play with her dolls. Aaron liked them too, I guess. <laughs> so, she had at least 20 of these dolls. She would line them up very neatly I think they both have OCD here. So, the Jessica would line them up. The grab, the, then Aaron would grab a doll, run across the house, and throw the doll, leaving grandpa's or grandma's lap wide open for the taking. Jessica would immediately jump off of grandma's lap, hot pursuit of Jason, and yelling at Aaron. they told me I had here. Okay, she did exactly what he wanted her to do. Aaron then would jump off Grandma's lap, grinning at Jessica, feeling so proud that he was in control. When Aaron was about five, he wandered out of the backyard attempting to scream and yell. Oh, this is the time. Remember the movie Toy Story, I mean, uh, Christmas Story? The boy sticking his tongue on the pole? Well, 
Young Aaron took a baseball bat. And <laughs> walking into the house, and mother had to put the bat under the faucet to warm it up so she could take the bat off of his tongue. You know, <laughs> one third of my life was spent at the firehouse, so I never got to see any of this stuff. All I could hear is hear about it. Well, then Aaron had to break his arm over at the Amaro uh, playground. Yep, he broke his right arm. I was taking people over for a boat ride since I just bought this boat, and uh, I come back and nobody's there. Like, where did everybody go? They said, oh, he had to take him to the hospital. Oh, great. Okay. Aaron's been full of life and adventure, and is a hard worker, full of drive and determination. Aaron has played sports all his life, and he has won many awards and scholarships, worked as a manager on the football program at the University of South Alabama, and spent countless hours washing the football uniforms for the team, which was a very humbling experience for him. Aaron is not a stranger to hard work. At the UWO, he majored in kinesiology while dedicating himself to the Titan football program for four years. After graduation, Aaron decided to want to be a part of the something bigger. So, a four hour drive, well, I can read this, I'll just tell him. He wanted to get into Alabama in the worst way. So, his route was to come through the weight room door. So, he was supposed to meet Coach Cochran at a certain time. I think it was around about seven in the morning. Aaron gets there very early in the morning, calls the coach to him, he's there. Coach says, okay, I'll have to meet you around 11 o'clock. So from 7 to 11, Aaron's wandering around the campus, so he finds a way into the weight room. So he's in this weight room cleaning. Here's this OCD thing going on again. <laughs> and uh, so finally the Coach Cochran shows up at 11 o'clock. He says, I have heard all about you, and when can you start? From another coach that's been watching him cleaning this whole gym. Just crazy. So this is how we got to start. It Alabama. Hard work, yes. Dedication, show him that he was, you know, a good worker and all that. My little tip for him was, if anybody gives you any shit on her, just tell him we won the war. He's got a master's in sports management business, a business management, which lead, led him to the Atlanta Braves <clears throat> for the first two years. Learned a lot of stuff there. Um, I told, I kind of warned him too. I said, you're in baseball, you're gonna get fired. <laughs> he says, uh, yeah, two years later, they fired a whole coaching staff. So he found out about that too. But it was probably a good thing. He got to come back to Jordan. He got to work for Anytime Fitness which is a uh, manager at Ripon Wapan, doing very well, very proud of him for that. Out of 2,400 stores throughout the country, he is ranked 22 and 55. Very good. Well. So they always tell me that parents should also teach their kids about life, how to improve life, how to be a better person. So I have a little side story here. Hopefully this is giving you some inspiration or not. Something. <laughs> this young couple, newly married, we're gonna have a baby, a child for the first time. So they're in the birthing room, doctors in there, nurses in there, mother, father. So the lady's going through a lot of labor. Doctor gets down and receives the, the child out upside head. Just a head, no arms, no legs, I'm just a head. Father looks at the doctor, doctor looks at the father, and the father looks at the mother and says, well, we're just gonna have to raise the head as a normal child. So 21 years goes by, father says, okay, I'm gonna take the head down to the bar and celebrate his birthday. Quit laughing over there. So he puts the head on the bar and he says, bartender, give us a shot here, it's the head's birthday, 21 years. So the old man takes a shot, takes the shot to the head, poof, 
He has arms and a chest. The bartender and the father kind of look at one another, just give us another shot. So the old man takes a shot, the kid takes a shot, poof, he has a son. Oh, now he's all ecstatic. It just lines up everybody for a drink and all that. So he says, give us another round. Father takes a shot, drinks it. The kid takes a shot, poof, he's gone. The moral of the story is, quit while you're ahead. <laughs>